that do its thing. Da, 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 da. Three different sizes. Can it be done? Bum, 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 bum. Oh, ah, 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 ah. oh, actually, that's pretty easy. Hand-eye coordination. Ten. Brain cells. Nil point. Never mind. Homebrewers, welcome! Hope you're having a fantastic one. So, uh, we've got a very simple one today. Can you make a passable white cider out of five apples, some turbo yeast, in about two weeks? Or less. That, would, that is the plan. So, uh, the yeast that I'm going to be using is turbo yeast because uh, I happen to have the turbo pure. Because, you know, for various reasons. I happen to have it, so I'm going to use it. Uh, if you were going out your way to do this, I would wait until you see the results of this one to see if it works. Because as homebrewers, we always try and make the very best we possibly can. But, um, in theory, this should be really cheap. Because this should be better than an ordinary white cider. Because we are actually using the apple. <laughs> the whole apple. Not a pressed apple and then rehydrating the pulp and leaving it with the flavours. So we're doing an on the pope fermentation, so it has the maximum amount of time to get as much of the flavour of the apple into our booze. Which means we're going to have to add some sugar, because it's a white cider. And I have actually measured 500 grams of sugar. Now, you can make it stronger if you like, but um, it's an experiment. And I just want to see if you can make a half decent cider, or passable cider, for the price in a couple of weeks. So I'm not going to be adding in any finings or anything like that. That's why I've allowed a couple of weeks to do this. Because in theory, this, this should work exactly the same as ordinary yeast. It will ferment, it will drop to the bottom, you take your jus, add in a bit of sugar, and hopefully in a few days, because it is a turbo yeast, it will be pre-carbonated and good to go. That's the plan. So since this is, there, can't speak, since this is an on the pope fermentation, I have myself a bucket. Lovely, lovely bucket. Now it has already been sterilized, but I am going to be adding in boiling water uh, just to dissolve the sugar and you know, give the apples a quick scorch. So um, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Let's just, let's just do this and see what happens. Because uh, I'm, I'm interested. It could work. Hopefully. Very worse, I could always just pour in some apple juice in it and pretend that it's cider. Yeah. So for those interested, I have one Granny Smith, two Brayburn apples, and two of these little fun size apples. I know they're sweet, I do not know exactly what they are. They were just uh, unspecified little fun size apples in the shop. And I'm thinking tannin, bit of bitterness, sweetness, super sweetness, perfect. So, step one of this is I am going to take a little pot and a cheese grater. And I am going to grate all of these so they have the most surface area. So in theory we get the most flavour that we possibly can out of these five apples, which cost less than two pound. So, uh, yeah. I'm... This is my life now. Grating apples. Grating apples. So, uh, I'm going to use the large one. I'll see you in a few. Good waste, I know we're only using five apples. So I'll just take a few of the pips out. Either I grated them all or there just was not that many pips in this. But since my side has already been sterilized, because I'm a good boy, I'll get rid of that one. Just double check. So one or two of these little seeds, I know they contain cyanide, but uh it's such a small amount that you really do have to work really hard to cure yourself with a few pips. But hey, it's up to you. What do you want to do? I've just grated the whole lot. And uh, as you can tell, that actually, it's good apple juice. Anyway, so we now have our basics. Move that to one side there. Of our jus. And that is the hardest bit done. 
So uh, I've got my sterile container. Open it up, give it a yes. It smells fresh, almost as if I was using baby bottle sterilizing tablets. Just happens to be getting thin bleach is actually getting pretty hard these days. You never seem to have any, and I'm not using toilet bleach, even though in theory you could. But thick bleach doesn't work very well. Anyway, so into the bucket this goes. Shloop. And to that we are going to add our 500 pre-measured grams of sugar. That is our fermentable sugars. Don't want to waste any of the apples, so I'm actually going to measure for a change. Anyone would think I was going fancy, so uh, that is one litre. In that goes. Do I have another litre? I'm calling it a litre and a half. There. Sterilised. Right, just going to rinse my mixing spoon. And now I'm going to stir it. There's a, I would take a video of this, but there's really not much to look at. It's just to make sure all the uh, apples and the sugar are dissolved. And, mm. It really does smell good though. I will give it its due, considering it's just five apples and some water. By now, all the sugar should be dissolved. It, uh, it smells really good. It smells really apple-y, so I have high hopes. Low expectations, but high hopes. So uh, I'm now just gonna top this up with some cold water. So I've already put in approximately one and a half liters of water. I've got another liter here. So that's two and a half. I even filled my kettle up. It's got cold water in there. So, one and a half, two and a half. There's three liters, or oh, three and a half. And do I have enough? Yeah, that, that, that doesn't quite work. Right, and the last liter. So this is Four and a half liters. <sighs> there we go. So it's uh, it looks like cider. I will say it's got the right color. I wouldn't say it's a, a heavy cider, but there's definitely cidery colors to it, and it's definitely a one-gallon batch. And I even measured everything. I must be ill. I must be ill. It's because I let my hair down, obviously. So this is still a little bit warm. Uh, I can feel the heat coming off of it a bit too warm, which is, uh, that's weird, considering how much cold water we added in. But uh, I'm just gonna pop the top on and I'm gonna leave it for a little bit and we're gonna come back once it's cooled down. So I've let it cool down for a bit so we can now take a hydrometer reading. It is best to, uh, Take a hydrometer reading when it's cool, because, well, you know, density changes very slightly, not enough to really do any uh, any major difference, but I was just curious, since we've measured it all out, we know every single thing that went into it, the only thing we don't know is the sugar content of the apples. So we're gonna find out. So in goes the hydrometer, just give it a little spin, and uh, cause I can and I'm really curious, because, you know, five apples, what does it taste like? It's actually quite good. It actually tastes appley. Watered down apple, but hopefully the fermentation on the pulp should give it a bit more apple flavor. And uh, to be fair, once it's bubbly and cold, I don't think you're really gonna notice that much difference. I shouldn't have eaten two fish and all those chips, but sometimes it's gotta be done. So the hydrometer has settled out and it is reading 1.040, so what's that, 6-ish percent if it ferments to dryness? Let's have a look, 1.040 right there. So approximately 6.5%, so uh, 
the apples in there seem to have given a sugar content of one and a half percent. Six and a half, six, five, five point five. No, one percent. Math, hard, hard math, bad. So, <laughs> put that to one side. So now the only thing we've got to do is pitch some yeast. Now, uh, this is meant, as you know, for a five gallon batch. And uh, how, do you, how do you open it? Really? Normally they have little tabs that you rip. I need, I need Stabitha. I have returned with Stabitha. <laughs> right, so I'm just gonna, uh, that, that makes the job a lot easier. So, uh, again, this is enough for five gallons, so I'm just gonna, that should be enough. You could measure it out and divide it by five, but it's really not needed. It's meant for 15% and we're only brewing six and a half. So that's basically what, what we're done. We're done, that's the hard part done. So yeah, that's just basically done. I'm really curious to see how long this actually takes to ferment and clear. Uh, clearing is the main thing because we're not using any type of fining on it because uh, we want to carbonate it. So I'm saying it's gonna take two weeks, but at the same time, I have no idea. I haven't seen anyone try and do something like this. White cider or low fermentation using turbo yeast. So it should be, it's an experiment. We will find out if this does work. We will come back and we will see if it works with bread yeast and make it a brewing with bread yeast video. But until then, we're just gonna stick the lid on, fasten it and leave one side open. So uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. You know, check out some other ones, do all those things other people that know what they're doing uh, tell you to do on YouTube. But most of all, carry on homebrewing. So, uh, I'll see you later.